God in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and worship him. He is a way maker. He is a promise keeper. We know him to be that. Everlasting after everlasting. He will always be able to make a way for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can set your hopes on him. Hallelujah. There's so many times when men will fail us. There's so many times when promises can be broken by the people that you trusted the most. So many times when you have your affection set on something and then it just fails. But there is one most high God. Hallelujah. Who will always make a way. He's everlasting. He is the everlasting God. He will always make a way. He is a promise keeper. He will always keep his promise. He will always keep his word. Hallelujah.
first time here, or maybe your first time in a while. If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Good morning, good morning, good morning! Good morning! Good morning. How are we doing this morning? We're doing great. How about you? I'm super fantastic. I heard everybody's kind of tired this morning. I am yeah. super fantastically tired. Yes. <laughs> Amen. I am tired. Do you want to dismiss our kids to city kids no. first? No, we're not dismissing. Guess well, what, guys? You can stay with us stay today. With service with us today. We, you're not going to have your service today. We decided to give your children's leaders a break because we actually worked so hard so on our hard yesterday, yesterday and yeah. our, our block <sighs> cross and our block party event. It was amazing. Yeah. Don't go over that yet. But it was amazing. I know. Okay, I'm trying you to stick to the script. He always wanted me to stick to the script. So, connection cards. If you are a first time guest, please make sure that you see one of our hosts, Miss Jasmine, standing over there. She'll be more than happy to help you with a connection card. Fill out that connection card so that we can stay connected with you and you can know what is going on at all times because we have something big coming up. We have something really big coming up. Okay, so wait, before we continue. I'm not going to follow this phone because <laughs> I'm far sighted and near sighted and when I have my contacts and I can't see. I can't read this. Okay. So. Well, the next thing that we were going to talk about after the connection cards was our event on yesterday. And I have <laughs> got to, oh my God, <laughs> I have got to say, CCP, you guys did a marvelous job as a pastor. I have never been yeah. so proud Amen. of my church. I showed a love for the community yesterday oh at our, 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 our back to school bash and block party. Amazing. You okay. guys blew it out of the park. Amazing. And the community welcomed us, and we felt the love of the community, yeah. and we showed God's love. God is so amazing, and he can do amazing things with a little, because you see, we are not that big of a church, and we did such a fantastic job. And when I said they loved us, they said, y'all coming back tomorrow. <laughs> right. Are y'all coming back soon? Right. So you know we got to get together and yeah, get yeah. something together. Oh <laughs> we got to get something together so we can do that again. Yeah. <laughs> that okay. was amazing. But one of the things, I lost my mic. Test, 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 there we go. Uh, one of the things, uh, uh, we had a, a man who stopped by, and I, he caught me coming back in from the bus stop. <laughs> He was standing at the Marta bus stop and he seen the trail and he said, wait a minute, you guys are setting up over there. He said, I have got to run some errands. He said, I can't get my kids over there. And and, and I have three kids and I, I need, I, I want to try to get back. He said, any way y'all can do anything. I said, the kids actually have got to be present to get the book bags. And I, my heart went out for the gentleman because he really wanted his kids at the block party. He did, he did. But I, I seen an amazing post on Facebook yesterday. Oh my goodness, it was. And, and, and it was from uh, Dion Sanford. She said when she found out, and I'll, I'll summarize the, her statement. She said when I found out the community that we were going to host the block party in, I was afraid. I was scared. I was a little apprehensive. Because if y'all didn't know, if you hadn't watched the news, a man came outside to stop someone from shooting their gun in the air in the community. And the guy killed the guy for, for saying something to him in the community that we were at yesterday. So Dion was a little apprehensive. And then she said, the love that we showed the community. And the love that they showed us. And the love that they showed us, she said, people that came in were so appreciative 
of us being there. Just See, being I told, we are a church that will do life together with people. Amen. Amen. We want to be the poor. So, and she said, people came up, requested prayer. Yes. People, kids were coming up, saying, are you, like, like my wife said, are y'all coming back tomorrow? Which prompted us to kind of maybe jumpstart what I'm about to tell you is that we want to start a sidewalk ministry for children in that community on Saturday mornings. But it's going to take a team effort to put on a, a, serve, a sidewalk service for children. And not just any sidewalk service, but we want to bring it. Yeah. We don't want to just go out there and set up a, a podium and then say, come on, kids, let's do this. But no, we want to bring it. We Amen. want to show them continuous love. And we want Amen. them to always feel the love of Christ as we come out. Amen. I can't read this. I, you can't see. Let me see it, love. <laughs> Let okay. me see it. What's next? Because she don't have a... It's on the <laughs> Now, here's, the, here's a big one, which we announced that we are moving, if you haven't heard the news, we are moving. This is officially our last Sunday in this facility. We will be moving into our very own facility starting next Sunday. Next Sunday. We will be live on Facebook, YouTube, whatever, Tubi TV, whichever we're going to be whichever we're going we're gonna to be live in our own facility next week. We stopped by yesterday. I was hoping to get the keys, but it, but the maintenance guy said I can't get the keys yet because we had a few more electrical things to take care of. But the carpet is laid. Nice. They got it freshly painted, nice. which we're gonna go back and we're gonna put our own colors in there because you know how we do. And and and, and we're gonna well all this week coming up. I'm soliciting all you guys as well. All volunteers, we need because we have got to pick up chairs. We have got to pick up of other stuff. We Matter of fact, we, when we pack, we have to paint. When we when we pack everything up today, we're gonna be moving it in next week sometime. So you're gonna be getting an email, phone call, text message. Don't say, oh, they go past them. I'm not gonna answer. No, now, I don't I, want you to do that. I will look. We want all volunteers on deck to be able to move in, make this transition as smooth <laughs> as possible. See, because when the transition goes smooth, and after after this Sunday coming up. Y'all know me. My worship, I'm sorry, I said mine. Our worship experience that we offer God is going to be simply amazing. Our worship experience is already amazing. Thank you. Want to do it? Yes, it is. Want to do it? Want to do it? So, next Sunday, guys, we will be at 2459 Roosevelt Highway, College Park, Georgia, Suite B11. Sweet B11. When you turn into the office park, yeah. start looking to the left. And you know us. You're going to see our signs. You're going to see our banners. You're going to see our flags. You're going to see cones. And I wish I'd get one of them whirly lights. <laughs> they can shine the light up. That, that'll just bring it right on in. Y'all know me. I'm sorry. Next. <laughs> Life groups. We're, we're going to be starting life groups next month. Well, and it's only a couple of days away. So I ha actually had to postpone a little bit. I wanted to start next week, but because of the move, I had to kind of push it off. So it may be one or two weeks before we start life groups, and we will be doing life groups once a month. We'll be having our life groups once a month. Now, that's not to say that, ladies, y'all can get together and y'all can have an event uh, or, or get together for, for whatever, because men, I'm going to plan us some outings together away from life group. We're going we're gonna to fellowship together. We're going we're gonna, gonna, to gonna talk about stuff. You know, only things that we talk about when we're not around our wives. Amen? You know, talk about this stuff. Because, you know, we don't say everything in our wife's presence. We have to kind of hold it in. And then we get in the presence of the men. We have to kind of ease the conversation on in. And we got to talk about y'all. And ladies, when we get together, we going to ease some conversations in. Lord, help me. And talk about them men. <laughs> but no, we have more important things to talk about. We already know. Amen. 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 Now, the next, we're going to have our next steps that's going to be, that's going to be following. Okay. Uh, now, our next steps is going to be our growth track. 
is going to be getting you plugged in into the ministry, which you guys are plugged in. You're locked and loaded. And with, but it's to give you a, a, it's for us to get to know you a little better as well, as well as you get to know your spiritual gifts to where you will serve the church and God's ministry the best. So, so that you give your all. See, if you're not a server and you're, and you're a sourpuss, and, 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 and you're not going to be in front of people. You're not going to be around children if you, if, if you don't have a smile on your face, if you're not happy, if, you, if you're not, don't, don't have that joy. We don't want somebody, we don't want our host to be, hey, welcome to CCB. No, we want to plug you guys into that, that person will be the sound person. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just kidding. But but we want to get you plugged in, where you where you can thrive in doing ministry, and you and you do the best that you can possible possibly be. With God. Why are you backing up? Come back here once. I love my wife. She tickles me. And your phone won't open back up. There it is. All right, and then we have City Babies that uh, that's going to launch in our new facility. Now, moving into our new facility, we actually have a wall that we have to put up that's going to separate our children's church from uh, City Babies for our nursery. And y'all know me. We were praying last week for, for somebody to step up with the babies that we can go ahead and launch City Babies. And guess what? Yesterday, somebody did something. Such an amazing job with the babies <laughs> at the event that they said, Pastor, you know I love babies. <laughs> and she said, I would be so honored to love on the babies and city babies. So yeah, you know I, I love the babies. Carissa dear, thank you so much for stepping up and, and being that, that point person for our city babies. So, parents, you have a place for the babies to go once we get this wall built up. I'm looking for a contract that's going to put this wall up for our kids and, and separate those units. And we're going to be rocking and rolling with city kids and city babies and city reach. Big church. Amen. 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 Man, you, you need to change your thing on your phone. Your phone lock out too much. And then let us be the first to say, walk out again. Welcome home. Welcome home. <laughs> Look, it, it's great to laugh at church right now. Uh, <laughs> we, we're family. Look, look. We tell you, we are family. It's good to laugh. It's good to joke. It, it's good to kid. In church, it, you know, laughter makes you feel good. It is good for your soul to laugh. And I, and my face is hurting because I can't stop smiling. Oh, my goodness, babe. You do it for me. I love you. Wow. I can't even start my message right now. My mouth hurts. Oh, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you. We worship you because your presence is so real in this place yeah, right now, Jesus. Yeah. Father you, God, we thank you for, for our praise and worship team who, yeah, who ushered us into your you. presence, Lord. Thank and it was you, so Lord. real and so thick and so rich and life-changing. Thank, thank you, Lord, for just, just coming in and residing here with us today. Father God, anoint our ears to hear your word and, and anoint our hearts to receive it, Lord. Father God, I pray that you will give me the ability to, 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 to say what you want me to say, Lord, in an effective manner that it is life-changing. And we do ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're finishing up our series called Divine Direction. We're finishing up our series, and I almost hate to, to have to end the series this week because so many stories are, are coming back from things happening on jobs, things happening at home, they, doors just flying wide open for divine, divine direction in people's lives. I am blown away. 
God can have planned it better for CCP for this series to fall the way it has. So, I, God, guys, look, thank you for, for putting up with me doing this series. I told you it was going to be simple and practical, but it was going to be life-changing and, and power-packed and moving where your life would actually never be the same. So if you're watching live on Facebook or YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. We thank you for your faithfulness because we could not do what we do without you. Man, I am in a mood to preach today. I'm in a mood to preach. I am, I am. I'm really in a mood to preach. So I'm wondering if, if anybody's in the mood to hear a good message today. Is anybody in the mood to hear about divine direction? See, see, I'm ready to preach it, and I'm ready to hear it, and I'm ready to receive it. Because, you know, when you speak, you actually preach to yourself. And when I'm studying it, I'm studying it to myself. I'm soaking it in. I'm getting it in. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, you're just so rich and so full, and you're, you just make my life so much better and complete. And, and it's all through God's Word. So it's my prayer that God is going to stir some of you into divine direction that will take, that you will take the next step of your faith and following God's direction for your life. To step towards your destiny, you often have to step away from your security. How many of you get secure where you're at? You, you, you get happy at your job. You get, get happy doing the same old thing, the same old routine every day. See, I'm a routine person. I have to do things in order like this in order for me to function sometimes. My keys have to go in the same place. I have to do the same thing this. I have to do the same thing that. And, and, and how many of you, sometimes you get stuck in that rut when, 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 when you do the same thing, you become secure because that's your routine. That's your thing. This is where you, this is where you feel like you thrive. But when you are in your, that, that, that your so-called security in your comfort zone, God is not thriving in your life. See, because sometimes I will, I will, I will honestly say this, that when you're in that rut, when you're in that security or that safety zone, you're not living by faith. Come on now. That's true. Amen. To step towards something new, you have to step away from something old. Wow. Wow. You have got to yeah. let stuff go to move yourself forward. See, I'm like a projectile. I want to poke. I want to go out the gun with a blaze. And, and, and I will leave stuff behind me. Now, the one flaw that I do have is that I don't like to leave people behind. And I struggle with that. But how many of you know that sometimes people are in your life for a lifetime, but some people are in your life for a season, and sometimes you have to cut those strings and let those people go because you're going to be drugged back. You're trying to go forward, and you can't go forward with everything that you have because you got people pulling on your shirt, tail, coat, tail, shoes, shoe strings, everything else, holding you back. See, I believe that we're, seek, we're, we're seeking God's divine direction. God is going to call you to start something new. To start something in a new direction. It might be to start over in a relationship. It might be, it might be for you to start a new job, to start a new ministry, to start tithing, to start a, some type of new business. I don't know what it might be for you, but for me, it's to take CCP to, to what I envision it for it to be even more, even more than, than what I thought it could be. See, because God has given me a vision, and you guys are taking that vision and running with it. Yesterday was was <laughs> yesterday was 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 just eye opening and mind blowing to see what God can do in a community. I went out, and, and Ephraim was was out front, and, and 
And he said, Pastor, he said, I see people come from this corner over uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. and, yeah. and I look over here and I see people come from yeah. that corner. Oh and Pastor, God. I look over here yeah. and people come from this way. People are coming from everywhere in this yeah. community. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and even the guy that, 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 that abuses his game truck, he said, Pastor, this event is off the chain. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh. And then our, our, one of our sponsors, Aaron's Rental, they said, my God, this is an amazing event. And I'm sitting up there saying, Jesus, we got to do this again <laughs> in another community. But that's what I envision our church to do. This is what I envision our church to be. You have to let something old go to move forward into something yes. new. We're moving next week into our, our, our new facility. But my heart and my mind is already into the next facility. So when you see things, Pastor, why are you doing this? It's to prepare us for the next facility. Not to focus on the one that we're in, but to prepare us into the next one. I'm going to say a couple of things that are going to be obvious. But, but I'm going to say them because they're true. For so many people, it is, it is often, uh, it, often the, the start that stops people. They get, they get stuck with the start. They don't know how to start. Right. And they're afraid to start. So they're stuck because they don't want to change. They don't want, 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 they're afraid. What if I fail? What if, what, so what if you fail? Start again. Amen. If you fail, start again. See, we look at a, a, a woman who, who, who weighs, to say, 212 pounds. And, and she loses weight and she gets down to about 106. And, and, and she's like a size 2. And you're like, man, I want to I, I wanna be like her. But I don't know where to start. So you do nothing. And see, that's where, we, that's where we're stuck. We, 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 we see things happening, but we won't move forward to those things that we know God is telling us to do. You have got to start if you, if you want to finish. Yes. But you've got to start. How many of you have ever been in that place where, where you wanted to start, but, but you didn't know how to start, and, 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 and had you stuck? I've been there. See, I'm praying that, that God would give you the faith to start in a direction that, and, and would change and alter the course of your life forever. See, we're going to look at Nehemiah in the Old Testament. And I, I love the story. And, and when I was reading the story again, I was like, man, God, you, you are so amazing when, 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 when one person would decide to stand up for you and will live for you and will decide that I'm going to start something new and let go of some old stuff so that you can be the God of my life and everybody else is going to know it and everybody else is going to see it too. You see, the backstory of Nehemiah is that God basically told his people, I want you to obey me. And I want you to worship me. Unfortunately, they didn't obey and they didn't worship. How many, how many of you, without raising your hand, think about it. How many of you that fits you right now? Mm -hmm. God says, I want you to obey me and I want you to worship me. But you have made, uh, you have drawn a line and said, say, God, I will give you this, but I refuse to give you that. Wow. You see, the Babylonians, they came in and, and destroyed and demolished everything that mattered to the people of God. The, Babylon, the Babylonians wiped out the temple, destroyed the wall, burned most of the city, and took God's people into captivity. 
And, and watch this. 400, 140 years later, a remnant goes back to the homeland to say, we're going to rebuild this. They were discouraged. They were embarrassed. They were, they were humili 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 humiliated. How many of y'all have been that way? How many of you have been embarrassed and you have been humiliated with, with knowing that, that God has called you to a specific task in a, in a specific time and you did nothing? You did nothing. See, God's people said, we're not going to allow this to happen anymore. As long as I'm alive, I'm going to stand for something. And see, I love the phrase divine burden. The, Nehemiah had a divine burden. He had a divine burden. Some of you, you, you don't even know it, but you have a divine burden. There's something in your life, and then you think, and I'm not okay with that. And, I, and I'm not okay with this. And because I'm a Jesus follower, my heart says, I can't go this route anymore. I have got to let the old stuff go to start something new. I can't keep going this way. I can't keep solid. I can't shut my eyes. How many of you know, you see the cartoon with the, the see no evil monkey, the hear no evil monkey, the speak no evil monkey. You know, some of y'all are like this. You got your eyes covered up, your ears covered up, your mouth covered up, and you can't function because you are stuck in the sand and you refuse to take a stand on what God has called you to do and what he has called you to say. Your divine burden often reveals your divine direction. Your divine burden often reveals your divine direction. Your divine burden, that which your heart aches for on the behalf of God, often reveals that God wants to do something through you. So what do you do when you have this kind of burden? What's interesting, interesting is, is when you look at Nehemiah, he was the least likely guy to be able to build this wall. If you don't know, Nehemiah was a cupbearer. And y'all like, what's a cupbearer? <coughs> See, Nehemiah was a, the, what we would call the official wine taster. He was the official wine taster for the king. Y'all like, ooh, really? I like that job. But let me tell you about his job. See, he had to taste it before the king drunk it, okay, and if it was poisoned, poison, he died. He died. Mm, never mind. Mm. So that was his job. How many of you would want that job? Mm -hmm. Nobody, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't either. Even in my lustful days, I wouldn't want that job. <laughs> Amen? But Nehemiah was not a construction worker. He was not a general contractor. He was a cook. Bear. Here's a guy that doesn't seem to be prepared at all for what God has put a burden in his heart to do. Who am I to do something about this? Which is exactly what God may call you to do. He, you might, who am I, God? When it came to CCP, I thought that, who am I? I was scared. Thank you, Nathaniel. Because I felt like that. I was like, God, you're kidding, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Really? Y'all heard me say it two weeks in a row. I was comfortable. I was happy. I was satisfied at Living Waters. I was in a good place at Living Waters. I had a, a routine at Living Waters. I was the first one on campus every Sunday. The first one. And I was putting out flags, putting out banners, opening and unlock, unlocking doors, turning lights on, setting things up, setting, praying as I'm doing it, setting the atmosphere for what which was about to happen on that campus. And God said one day, Okay, you're stuck, and it's time for you to do what I 
God called you to do? How many of you have been that way? Maybe even recently. It's time for you to move on and, and you're like, but God, is it really you? How many of you have ever asked God, is it really you telling me it's time for me to move on? To move, to, to do what you called me to do. To have the, the yeah, God, you're asking me to, to show you faith. How many of you have ever felt that? Well, I know I'm not the only one. Nehemiah wasn't prepared at all for the, for the burden that God had placed on his heart. See, if we look at Nehemiah chapter, chapter 1, verse 5 through 11. It says, then I said, the Lord, the God of heaven. I, I, and I love this. It's so moving. Watch this. The great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep, excuse me, and keep his commandments. If you want to move or pull the heart string of God, stroke God's ego. Tell him how good he is. Oh, God, you're so great. You're so wonderful. Oh, my. Parents, when your kids come up, Mommy, Daddy, I love you. Oh, you're the best mommy and daddy in the world. Oh, my God, I can have a more. Uh, the, the mommy and daddy, there, nobody else can ever replace you. And you just, oh, and you eat it up. You love it. And it makes you want to run through brick walls for your children. Stroke the ego of God. Let him know how good he is. And watch him move on your behalf. Nehemiah knew this. That's why he started this prayer off like this. And then in verse 6 it says, Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and the laws you gave your servant Moses. Stroke God's ego. Then when you stroke God's ego, repent. Stop. Turn around. Ask God for forgiveness. And don't do it again. Hard, right? Then the verse 8 says, Remember the instruction you gave the servant Moses saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled, exiled people are, are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there, from there and bring them to, to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Remind God of what he's already said in your life. Right. Remind him of, you have callings, you have, you have visions, you have dreams, and, 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 all you, and God has placed those things there. And sometimes you repress those things, you push them back and, because you haven't seen the fruit of them yet. And, yeah. But you don't know how to start. Wow. And but you tell God, God, this is what you said about me and my life. Yes. God, I'm reminding you yes. of what you yes. said yes. about yes. me. Yes. 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 You said this. So now, since you said it and it's, it's in my spirit, now it's time, God, that I, I need you to perform it. Yes. Then in verse 10 it says, they are your servants and your people. Whom you redeem by your great strength and by your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this servant. And, and, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in re revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was a cupbearer to the king. How moving is that? God, he laid it all out for God. God, okay, I'm trusting you to do this. See, because I know that I was just a lowly old cupbearer, but you have placed an awesome and a mighty burden in my heart to do something 
big for you? What has he placed in your life? What has he placed in your heart for you to do that is going to be, that's going to, going to change whatever it is that has to be changed? A community? A church? A world? It was, I remember uh, when the Deers first started uh, attending CCP. I said, like, hey, what, what, what kind of work do you guys do? Oh, we drive a bus. And I'm like, really? And Chris said, I love my baby. I love my babies, my kids. You see, where Carissa is planted, she makes an impact on those children's lives. Where you are planted, you make an impact on people's lives. You made an impact on a community yesterday. You make an impact on your job. You make an impact when you go shopping. You make an impact if you're waiting on a flight to fly to another country or another state. You make an impact when you're pumping gas and the person next to you looks over there and says, hey, how are you doing? Don't you say, I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> you say, I'm fine. How are you? Well, you're in such a good mood today. Why are you in such a good mood? You want me to tell you why I'm in a good mood? It's because I attend one of the greatest churches that a person could attend. I attend Cedar Reese Church College Park. And let me tell you about my pastor. And let me tell you about my praise and worship leader. Let me tell you about the people of CCP. Let me show you. Let me tell you. Let me do this. And let me. And they're like, really? Oh my God. Maybe I need to attend CCP. <laughs> no. But that's how our conversation can go. So it brings us to this question. As a Jesus follower with, divine, with a divine burden, how do you start something big? So let me qualify big. Something big might be starting a business. It might, it, something big might be paying off a student loan. Something big might be starting big like doing a men's ministry. Starting something big might be a Becoming a godly husband to your, to, your, to your wife and your children or being a godly wife for your husband and your children. When I talk about being, I'm talking about what God calls you to do that is going to be significant. For so many people, it's, it's the start that stops them. And, they, and, and you will never finish something if you don't start it. If you're taking notes, first point is you've got to start small. You see, a lot of times when, when we want to start, we want to start with, the, with, with, with what we actually see in our vision, which is a lot grander than what you can actually do at the time. You see, I pictured us being in like a thousand seat facility already. Middle church plan, amen. amen. With sound with a staff and sound guys and light guys and theatrics people and I just I know I got y'all over there. <laughs> and you guys do an amazing job. You guys do an amazing job to follow. <laughs> but you have to start small. See, in Zechariah 14, it says, Who dares despise the day of small things? Since the seven eyes of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zerubbabel. Don't be ashamed to start something small. Do not be ashamed to start something small. Do not be ashamed of starting something small. Because what does, what does the Lord do? He rejoices to, to see the work begin. He rejoices to see you start. 
So don't be ashamed. This is what God does when, whenever he gives you a burden that reveals a direction. And, and you don't understand the details. But suddenly you have, you, you, you have, you have the faith to take the first step. And God says, uh, uh, hold on. I need you to, to step back a minute. I need you to stop. Because I set step one right here. But you skipped over step one to get to step four, five, and six. But I need you to come back to one. I need you to, to, to kind of reel it in for a minute because I need you to focus on starting. I need you to focus on the start. So you're trying to get to the finish line, and, and I'm not ready for you to get to the finish line because there's a whole race between steps one and the finish. And I'm trying to get you there, but you're trying to beat me there. See, what's interesting, interesting if, you, if, if you go to the very end and trace back the small steps, it's really pretty encouraging. And I'll tell you why. It's because you can see God's hand and God's spirit moving every step of the way. See, with Nehemiah, they worked their butts off. To build that wall. If you, if you go back on another step, what did they do? They, they work with a tool in one hand and a weapon in the other hand to fight off their opposition. If you, if you go back another step, someone had, had, the, had the courage to put the first stone down. And then, and then, then, that, then you have to fight for your brothers. Then you have to fight for your, sis your, your sisters. You have to fight for your children. Then you have to fight for what God has put in your heart to do. You have got to fight. You have got to hold on to it with everything that you have. And say, God said it, so I'm going to go through it right now in Jesus' name, come hell or high water. If you go back a step before that, you see them in... You see them investing by night. You, you see them investigating. You see them taking notes. You see, you see what, what they're, they're planning what they're going to do. How's this going to work? Some of you are like that. You're, you're trying to look at the situation like, how's this going to happen? How's this going to, how, how would this flow this way? How is this going to be this way? God, you give me this burden, but I, don't, I, I, can't, I can't see how we're going to get, get this done. This is how they were doing when they were looking at the devastated city, when they were looking at the wall. They were, how we, it's just us. How are we going to get this done? How many, how, how many of you have ever felt like that? You looked at a task that God has given you, how am I going to get this done? I remember uh, uh, I, was, I was over in an event in Living Waters, and <laughs> about, um, about two weeks out from the event happening, my pastor calls. And he said, hey, Adam. I said, hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. I got a problem. Okay, what's your problem? Well, Andrew, uh, I don't hear any chatter about this event that's happening in a couple of weeks. What is going on? Uh, the event's going to happen? Yeah, but I'm not hearing anything. Everybody I talk to saying they don't know anything, that, that they haven't... Got any instructions on do? I said, yeah. I said, those are the people we always use. I got a whole other group of people that's going to take care of the event. I want to give everybody else who always do something a break. And he said, uh, but you didn't even contact me because you always do something. Oh, you see, at this start, I was like, how am I going to get this done? And then God put every step in the way in, in front of me to follow to get this event done. Till the day of the event, my pastor walked in, he said, man, good job, Andrew. You see, when we start, we have got to follow God's plan step 
by step the way he laid it out for you. That's right. How many of you, you know, you know, we get excited. That's our, that's in our nature to be excited when God gives you something to do. And you and you just ready to run with it. But a, a sprinter, a runner, a person that races, it's about their takeoff. It's about their start that will help them finish the race. It's the way that they start. It's their stance. It's, it's the way at the sound of the gun, they're gone. And it's about technique. See, I love what Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17 and 18 says. It says, then I said to them, you see the trouble we're in. Jerusalem lies in ruins. And his gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and, and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told him about the gracious hand of my God on me and what the king has said to me. They replied, watch this, let us start building. So they began to do this good work. You have got to start. To how, to do, how do you do something big? How do you start something significant? You have to have faith to start small. What's interesting to me is that, that he didn't know the details. He didn't know how it would play out. If, if, if you were here last week, the Spirit's prompting certain uncertainty. But, but here's, the, here's the really important point, I, I want, and I don't want you to miss this. You don't have to have faith, have the faith to finish. You just have to have the faith to start. You don't have to have the faith to finish. You have got to have the faith to start. I hope this speaks to somebody. You don't have to know all the details. God won't give you all the details. He's going to lead you in a direction and, and, and for you to take one step at a time. You don't have to have the faith to finish. You just have the faith to start. This, this is such an emotional message to me and, and because I teach it from 20 years of experience. 20 years of leading to the birth of CCP. See, at 27 years of age, I thought about, you know, I was married to my wife, I had two beautiful kids, and God placed a burden in, in my heart then to do ministry differently. And 20, 20 years later, then it's birth. When God places something in you, I don't care if you remind him every single day of the burden that he has placed in your heart. You let him know like Nehemiah. God, look, you said this, so now I'm just letting you know, God, I know you're not going to forget because you, you don't forget, but I'm going to tell you that this is what you said about me. How do you start something significant in me? Have the faith to start small. Don't let the start stop you. You never finish something you don't start. God's going to speak to somebody about this today. God's going, going to speak to somebody, and you're going to start. You're going to start. See, number two, if you're taking notes, is this. You take the next step. Just as simple as that. Start small, and then you take the next step. Now, I love this. In Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 19 and 20, it says, But when Sambal, the Hornite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite, the Ammonite official, and the Geshem, the Arab, heard about it, they mocked and ridiculed us. What is this you're doing, they asked. Are you rebelling against the king? I answered them saying, The God of heaven has given us success. His servants will start rebuilding. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. 
to start, you're going to have opposition. You're going to have those who are going to ridicule you. You're going to have those who are going to, are going to tell you that you're crazy. You're going to have those who are going to walk away from you because they can't see what you see. They don't feel what you feel. So their reaction is, if they can't see it, if they can't feel it, then you're nuts. Be nuts. Be crazy. You do what God has called you to do. Amen. Don't worry about your opposition. Amen. You are not everybody's going to be on your side. Amen. When we birthed CCP, when, when we finally told people about it, people were telling us, you sure you want a church plant? That is sure hard work. Oh my God, you're gonna you're gonna plant where are you gonna plant? Don't you wanna plant in the suburbs somewhere? Don't you wanna plant where there's money? You will face opposition every step of the way. Politely tell them, I'm kicking you to the curb. See, because not everyone that you allow in your circle is for you. And you have to dismiss those that who aren't for you, then you must be against me. So I cannot keep company with you anymore because God got, has me going on a direct path to something special, to something significant. And if you try to hold me back, I can't get there. So i got to let you go. Your burden often reveals your divine direction. That's why in, you know, in, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, it says, Let us not become weary in well doing, in doing good. For, the, for at the proper time we will, re, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Don't you quit. Don't you give up. Don't you worry about your opposition. God will take care of your enemies. You don't have to do a thing. You can watch them fall off to the wayside while God is propelling you forward. You don't stop them with your businesses. You don't stop them with your calling. You don't let them stop you. You keep pushing and you keep stepping and you keep moving. Don't let them stop you. Then and. It's not going to be easy. See, we have this lollipop Christ Christianity mentality that, that everything's going to be happy and it's going to be good. It's going to be easy. But I'm going to tell you, when you start your opposition, it, it's going to be a big fight for you to make it to where you're going. You're going to have to fight your way through every step of the way. Nehemiah and the people, they had to fight through the ridicule. They had to fight through the opposition. They had to fight through people wanting to attack them and say, oh, you're not going to do this. People will tell you, oh, you're not going to do that. How many times have people tried to dash your dreams and your visions just because they couldn't see it, and it didn't, it didn't sit right with them. I don't care if it don't sit right with you. I'm going to do what God has called me to do. You have got to have that mentality. If you have that mentality, you will not quit. You will not give up. That's right. That's right. Don't you go grow weary in well-doing. Don't fade to black like I say. I love my city babies. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Don't underestimate what God's going to do through you. Because sometimes we, we kind of overestimate. God will start small. But in starting small, I, I see that I can do this over here too. And then I see I can do this over here too. And, and I, I can see this over here too. Focus on the first step. God wants you to keep your focus. He has trusted you with, excuse me, with this dream. 
and with this vision. He's, he's trust. Do you know what it means for the God of heaven and earth to trust you with a vision of something that's going to propel his kingdom forward? He trusts you with it. He trusts you with the birth of your salon. He trusts you with the birth of your business. He trusts you with being an awesome student. He trusts you with being a praise and worship leader. He trusts you with everything that he's called you to do on your job. He has trusted you to be an awesome mom. He has trusted you to find and, and sell homes to beautiful people, making them the happiest people on the face of the planet. He has called you to touch the lives of everyone that you have come in contact with. He has trusted you guys to be awesome men, to be awesome fathers, to be awesome standards of men in the community. He's trusted you. He has trusted you. He has trusted you. Do you trust him? Do you trust him with that first step? He's placed a burden there. He's given it to you. But do you trust him because he gave it to you? I'm telling you, he trusted you for a reason. He knew that you were more than capable of taking care of the task. Huh. He knew that you were more than capable. He knew that you, my God, were more
what to do, who to talk to. We serve a God that, that, that you can take everything to. And how many of you know that in the right time and in the right place, he will send people to you. Ain't that right, Ethan? Will send the right people to you at the right time that will speak life into you when you feel like you don't have nothing left in the tank. Sometimes I feel like I have nothing left in the tank. But then we get to Thursday where we have our production meeting and, and praise and worship practice, and I hear the team sing. And then life is breathed back into me. Or I get a text message saying, I'm praying for you and your family, bro. Sunday morning and there's like no care in the world. How many of you know what I'm talking about? God is all about you because you're so amazing. I'm going to do something a little differently this morning. If, if, if you have, if you desire prayer for whatever it is that God has called you to do, and you want somebody to stand in agreement for you and with you, will you just raise your hand right now? Now I'm going to ask you to take another step of faith and stand to your feet. So Father God, I thank you for everyone who's standing right now in Jesus' name. And it's okay if you're watching live on Facebook, you stand right there way in unless if you're driving. But right now, in Jesus' name, Father God, I thank you for those who raised their hands and are standing. And I pray right now, in Jesus' name, that that burden, that, 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 that thing that you place inside them that no one else can do, I pray, Lord, that, that you make it plain for them. You show them the first step, and you give them the faith to make that first step. It's going to be a crazy step. It's going to, some, for some, it's going to be a leap of faith. And I pray right now in Jesus' name that you give them the strength, that you give them the courage to take that leap of faith. So, Father God, we're asking that you move on our behalf. We trust you, Jesus. And we know that you trust us because we know that we are more than enough. Whatever it is that you, you placed in our heart, that burden, that vision, that dream, Lord. Father God, we pray that, that it's, it's time, it's time, it's time for it to be birthed in Jesus' name. So are y'all ready to take that step of faith? Y'all ready to take that leap of faith? Are you ready to jump? Are you ready to run like the song said? Are you ready to move and, and, and then God? Don't be afraid to step out. Don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid. You move, you move, you move. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, Father God, if there's one that who has not received you into their life, Nobody prays alone, so if you would just, just repeat after me, even for those who are watching live on Facebook. Heavenly Father, today by faith I give you my life. Forgive me of my sins. Make me brand new. Fill me with your spirit so that I can follow you step by step you with my whole life. Give me the faith to follow you. My life is not my own. Today, I give it completely. I give it completely. I give it completely.
Oh, my God. 